The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. A skilled hunter, traveling alone. You! What's your business here in Leeuwenhorn? He travels to a small, burgeoning village in search of better game, and perhaps a new home. But the village is struggling. It seems the council has no regard for our well-being, so long as their pockets are full. In the clutches of darkness. Our town has been plagued for the last three months by this thing. We've all suffered as a result. Some call it a demon. The beast, he said, was a snarling void of darkness, staring at him through the eyes of fire. Some say it's nature's guardian. It's the spirit of the forest telling us we were wrong to build here. Few have lived to tell the tale. We run. As fast as we bloody could is what we did, and we didn't stop until we collapsed. He's nearly dead and I'm breathing out my ears. A bounty has been offered, and our great hunter has taken it upon himself to kill the beast. You'll get no aid from us, no food or otherwise. You'll be given two days to fulfill the contract. A helpful shopkeeper. Once you're finished making your preparations, return here. My wife and I would be happy to have you as our guest. And a young boy. I, for one, hope you succeed, Garen. It deserves to die. Slowly, for what it did. A solitary quest for vengeance and glory begins. Well, 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 look who it be. The grand and mighty savior of Lavenon has come down from his ivory tower to save us all. Though nothing is ever as simple as it appears. Audio Oblivious Productions presents Shadow of Labenhard. That was a new promo from Audio Oblivious, the folks that brought you great shows like Winnebago Warrior. Hi there, and welcome to Sonic Society Season 12, Episode 505. And I'm your host this evening, Jack Board. David Alt is off with the No Sleep Podcast Live. As of tonight, he should be in Dallas, Texas. So if you live in the area, go get your tickets today. By the way, if you'd like your program for an upcoming audio drama played on the Sonic Society, just send me a link through the Sonic Society email. And speaking of people, here's a call and I've been looking forward to hear. Greetings, Jack and David and members of the Society. This is your friendly neighborhood, Matt. And just wanted to share my pick for Audio Drama Sunday for this past week. It is a little late for the season. It is Sasquatch Comics, uh, Deck the Halls with Matrimony, written and directed by Ashley Perryman Quash. The Sonic Society played the first half in this week's episode 501. I became so invested in the story, I had to go and listen to the rest. In full disclosure, it had been sitting in my podcast queue for a while. My cynical brain was expecting it to be saccharine and predictable, but from the opening scene, it had me hooked. It is a, cin- it is a modern romantic comedy with just a twist of the golden age of cinema. I'm thrilled to now have another arrow in my quiver for when someone is looking for an audio drama that is not zombies or occult conspiracies. I only hope that Sasquatch Comics has more projects brewing for the future. Okay, that's it for me, guys, and keep on casting. Thank you, Matt. I've been told by Paula Deming that they indeed have more coming down the pipe, and we, for one, love the idea too. So check out Sasquatch, that's S-A-S-S-Q-U-A-C-H dot com for more. Well, I've got to rush this through as tonight's feature is long and a personal one for me. About 16 years ago, I was in the Universalist Unitarian Church and watching a play being performed. One of the conceits the writers had was... There were small roles for the people in the pews to yell out to. 
I was hit with an idea, and before I went home, I had the entire story worked out in my head. I hadn't written a single script in probably 20 years, but when I got home, in about two and a half hours, I had half the script written. The minister was a friend of mine at the UU Church, and I, and I told him how inspired I had been. He told me he wanted to see it performed in the church, so a month later, I was performing it for a Sunday service. Without going into details, the response from the congregation set me off on a path that I've accepted today, and that's being a script writer. So when Richard Summers and I started working with new producers, I'd always thought this play would be an ideal show to practice producing. It had a few characters and needed a little adaptation. So Peter O'Malley and Umberto Lenzi worked very hard on both their adaptations of this show with the promise that we would present one of theirs on the Sonic Society. Umberto's adaptation is tonight, but they were both so excellent. Choosing one was super hard. Please listen to both on the EVP website as they are posted there, and both will be placed in in the EVP podcast as well. For now, however, I'm pleased to present to you Breathing Space from Electric Vicuna Productions right here on the Sonic Society. We are concealed by the shadows. At all times, light is mocked only by the edges of darkness that threaten to swallow us from view. In a dark cell, a world without light, a man, a very nondescript man, naked, in the fetal position, awakens to a new realm of terror. No! No! It's not right! You can't do this! It's not right! It's not fair! It's not... It's not... I don't know. I don't know. Why'd you bring me here? Why? I, I never did anything to you. Did I? Did I? I didn't say anything. I didn't... I didn't tell anyone anything. I didn't do anything. Do, do you hear me? Do you hear me? Don't panic. For God's sakes. For God's sake, don't panic. For God's sake, don't panic. It's not like you're in trouble here. <laughs> okay. You're okay. You're fine. Fine. Just dandy. Take a breath. Calm down. Okay, halfway there, again, and this time without the dramatic sound effects. Good, good, just, just, just practice breathing. This can't be so hard, can it? Autonomous function? Just let it happen and focus. Just let it happen and focus. Take, take your mind off the fact that you don't know where you are. Or how you got here. Or who you are. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Once again, this time, stop talking to yourself. You're freaking out. Good. Much, much better. I'm just so confused. He probably got stuck in a well or in a closet somewhere. <laughs> That's good. Hey, just keep it light. Keep it unreal. Try to find out where you are, get your bearings. Oh, it's so dark in here. I can barely see my hands in front of my face. Wait, I can't see my hands in front of my face. This is weird. I can't tell how close I am even to poking my eye. Ow! Okay. 
Ow. Huh. No window. Even a hole. Oh. What if there's no air holes? How'd they get air in here? Air. No wonder I'm having trouble breathing. Hello? Hello? Is, is anyone out there? Does anyone hear me? I'm in. I'm stuck down. I'm over. I'm lost. I'm lost. Does anyone know where I am? What if I run out of air? What if this place collapses on me? Maybe I'm in a mine. Maybe that's it. I'm a miner. And there's been a cave-in. And I hit my head, and I'm here. And they're getting help. But no one can hear me. I shouldn't use up the air. I should speak as little as possible. Conserve my strength. I don't feel a bump on my head. I don't feel any blood either. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. If I just wait here, somebody has to know I'm gone, right? I'll just wait here. Somebody has to know I'm gone, right? If I just talk a little, not too much, just to save the air, just, just a little, maybe I can remember more. Figure out how I got here. What's the, what's the last memory I have? Cool autumn breeze. Cool autumn breeze. Golden colored leaf. Golden colored leaf. Brazen sun. Brazen sun. Full piles. Full piles. Dried, crumpled, dried, crumpled, leaping joys. School days. School days. School days. School days. Back again. Back again. Kites in a charcoal sky. Charcoal sky. Kites in a charcoal sky. No, that's not right. No. That's not right. That can't be the last one. I mean. I was seven or eight. Who remembers how old you are when you're young? I was, uh, I was just in grade two or three. No, no, it was two. And, and I was at a farm, and it was a perfect day. And um, it was the first week of school, just after the summer, when everything's still new and, and special and you're not run over by the homework truck. I was let off the bus, and my sister was taking her time. She's so much older than me. This is old hat for her. Old hat. <laughs> I wear this... I'm wearing this old tweed hat. The kind that young newsboys and, you know, second banana hoodlums wear. And, I'm, and I've got it pulled low down by my right ear, just off the side, slightly. And it's, and it's the 70s, and no one wears a hat like that. Everyone wants to feather my page boy haircut, but I'm, I'm home. And I'm jumping into leaves. And, and I'm covered over by them. It's so quiet. I can see a kite in the distance. With the neighbor's kids flying a, a black black garbage bag cross kite, you know, with a with a long running tail. 
and I'm just listening. Listening to the silence of the world around me, and I, I feel like I'm surrounded by the dry rustle of the pages of books. The leaves smell like story time. I feel like dreams, you know, just over the horizon. So close and soft, and, and I'm cushioned perfectly against them. Just me and the, the old tweed hat and the, and the smell of the wool in my clothes and the coolness of the earth against the crackle of the pile. <laughs> An old dog sniffing and hunting for me. In a, in a moment, he'll lick my face and I dance about panting against the backdrop of a lazy, <laughs> smoky sky. In the distance, a fire pit is burning, old twigs and kindling and leaves collected from, from the fall of it all. I've closed my eyes, covered up like I'm, I'm there, always. Silent. I don't want to be here. It's so confining in here. Who can stand this kind of claustrophobia? Oh, that's it. I'm claustrophobic. Great. Now that I know I can't stand small places, I'm going to freak out. And then I'm going to run out of air. And then I'm going to pass out. And then I'm going to... Moonlight Bikes. Moonlight Bikes. The sound of crickets and the road winding and the road winding occasional lights like occasional lights. will of the wisp rounding dusty bends and making their way into the distance while the shadows of the forest and the hills break up the light on the land from the burgeoning star rise and the crimson kiss of the sun setting against the farmer's barn Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, I remember she felt like this. Her hand touched mine and it felt just, just like this. There's nothing like that feeling. Nothing. Abigail Rosenthal. Abigail Rosenthal. Say it again, it sounds like music. Abigail Rosenthal. We knew each other through the church, and she was just far enough away to make the bike ride worth it. I was too young to ride there without a reason, and this time, this first time, I remember we were coming back from a youth group function, and it was... It was only gentlemanly of me to see her to the next concession line. I mean, it was dark out. She was only 14. I was 13, but it, but it didn't matter. You know, because I, I was the man. I was her escort. And besides that, she kind of let me tag along. We biked in silence for almost 10 minutes. And when we hit the hill, just before the concession... That's when we dismounted and talked. She was a little cold and asked for my sweater. I don't even remember removing it. It was just in her hands, like that, blink. And she touched me and it felt, it, it felt like, it felt like this. <laughs> and nothing, nothing ever replaces that feeling, that, first touch. Nothing ever removes that first love from your mind. It's there. Like a painting in the walls of your heart. Everything else is measured by it. And they never can be. Because it's the first time. And it's just it's just like this. 
And every time you feel it, even a little, it's just, it's just a reminder of that time. And you feel like being in love again and again because it's always like this, always just enough to remind you that you want it again. Want something that you can never have again because you could never have a first time again. From the moment you remember to your last Maybe that's it. This is some kind of test to, to prove my loyalty. To what? To whom? What country am I from? Who do I work for? Don't you see? I could be asking the questions here. I'm in the dark as much as you. More so! I'll bet you that's it. I'll bet they have some sort of top secret microphone embedded in here. And they're recording everything I say. Annotating it with a large yellow marker. Treasonous. Sedition. Collaborator. Words written down by those who can't spell them, let alone understand what they mean. What am I being held for? I demand at least a phone call. The Geneva Consensus demands I get a phone call. Or is that the Red Cross? I don't know. Somebody who was safe at home with their families and friends came up with this really, really good set of rules for something like this and then and of course I don't read it I mean I spend the whole time reading what people think I should be reading McLean's Christian Science Monitor BuzzFeed and I'm completely I'm completely unprepared for the important things in life why don't we hand out books on how to cook your shoelaces and 12 interesting entrees or 200 ways to keep you amused with finger games instead we have Robert's Book of the rules of order in your and your Twitter feed? I mean really? Did the Bushmen of the Kalahari survive all these days because they read Miss Manor's guide on placing your toilet roll with the paper I'm winding up instead of down? No. They had rules for these things. When you were a man, they went out and hacked off things, and then, and then everybody got together and talked about how amazing the Joneses boy was for not uttering a mind-numbing screech when the rusty blade stuck into the log. Okay. 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 So... So maybe there were some traditions we could do without, but that's, there's got to be some sense of respect. Not for the life that was going to be, but the moment he knew he was alive. He knew he was worthy of considering. His life may not have been much until this point. Maybe he was just in preparation. Maybe he'd get somewhere if he knew where he wanted to be. It's so much easier in the tribe. So much easier when someone tells you, okay, see this bloodied stump? See this cup full of leeches? You know, suffer, suffer through eating this and you're a man. Go run through ten acres of thickets and nothing but your smile and you're a woman. It's easier somehow when there's a line to be crossed in front of people who know you. Without that, they may never see you. may never see you grow up. It's not fair. 
It's not. It's not. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know. I just don't. Okay. Okay. So you're alone in the dark. There's no light. You're alone. My my eyes must be adjusting. I, I can't see any light, but I can see my hands now. I, I can see my hands now. That must be something. How awesome would it be to make shadow puppets? I could only make a duck with my hand. I, I know kids that could make... Every developmental stage of human evolution with nothing but palms and fingers, and I, and I can make a duck. I, I take it back. If I lift my arm higher, I can make a swan, too. There! That's a bird. Or a mutant spider. <sighs> You know, I can tell at least that you will live a long and very wealthy life. Your intelligent quotient intersects with a tropic of cancer and travels very far along the edge of the Cape of Hope. And your albedo line is a crevice that no other man can cross, winding around and around until it reaches your elbow. Okay, okay. I'm bored. I'm officially bored. If this is some kind of Milgram experiment, I give up. I do not give my consent. Okay? I just want to go home now. Please. 100 bottles of beer on the wall. 100 bottles of beer. Take one down, pass it around. Ugh, I just remember I hate beer. Dimly lit candles. Musky unwashed clothing. Floors. Sink full of caked on dishes. Unkempt. Long hours. Laughter that erodes the threads of examinations. New ideas. New people. Worlds beginning, worlds ending, worlds colliding, never ceasing change. I've always hated beer. If you traveled for three days upon the back of a mule through the Andes Mountains carrying tepid urine captured in a cured yak splatter, beer would come in a close second in a tasting contest for me. Oh, God, it's foul stuff one of the main food sources in university for most of my roommates. Their choice. But honestly, but honestly, from, from the time the keg opened, which was about 10 in the morning, and the beer stewed in its own froth, or was it frothing in its own stew? I don't know. We, we had some of the funniest discussions. I know, I was there. And being the only sober one, I also know I was the only one who remembered them. <laughs> we get into these you know, laughing fits. You know, <laughs> anything you say, anything. <sighs> it didn't help that we were up all night trying to do last week's homework. And <laughs> anything that you said, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely mind numbing, stomach wrenching. The painful laughter that would have us rolling off the street, curved sofa, and nearly knocking over the wagon wheel coffee table. <laughs> Digital watches. <laughs> Military intelligence. <laughs> Microsoft works. (laughs) 
And you know, I can't remember the actual conversations anymore. You drunk or sober. I just, I don't remember what we talked about. But, but I know it was important. And I know it was silly. And I know it was real. And I know it was a dream. And though I, I know that, I never really remembered why I ever laughed so hard. I just know I have. <laughs> and I could have laughed. And laughed. And laughed to myself to... I'm never going to get out. Uh, I'm never going to see the sun again. I'm going to sit here and talk to myself and drive myself crazy. I have all these memories and I don't even know my name. It must have hit me hard. I must have held out a long time. Longer than they expected or they wouldn't have put me here. Put me here to think about what I've done. Here. In this hole. Maybe that's it. I'm, I'm in a hole. Solitary confinement. I'm... I'm the prisoner who wouldn't cooperate. And some bent prison guards have pounded on my head with hockey pucks and old sweat socks and Baylor's twine, and I'm here, and I, I knocked all my marbles loose. Let me sit in a hole with only my wounds and my witlessness for company. <laughs> That's it. Leave no witlessness. That's it. Leave no witlessnesses. <laughs> Wounds. That, that can't be it. Wounds. I, I can't feel anything. There's no soft spots on my head. No gashes. No blood. What if... I mean... What if... What if this is all in my head? Okay. So, imagine myself free. If someone's locked up in their mind, can't they just... Can't they just imagine themselves free and it happens? Okay. Just close your eyes. Focus on your breathing. One. Two. Free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm still here. Okay. So maybe it's not that easy. Maybe it requires. Maybe it requires therapy. Maybe this. Maybe this is something to do with my mother. I wish I could remember my mother. I remember remembering my sister, but only her getting off the bus. I don't remember my mother or my father I, or anything, really, about my siblings. Maybe I didn't have one. Maybe I didn't have any brothers. And that memory of my sister really isn't a memory at all. Maybe it's just like, just like this place. Maybe it's just wish fulfillment. Me wanting to remember a life I lived on a farm. A moment with a girl. I mean, how do I know I've actually done those things anyway? Maybe I've just... Maybe I've always been here. Maybe the whole memories are coming in jumbled and confused because they really aren't memories at all. Maybe they're just dreams, delusions. And this place is the reality. I don't have a name. Maybe I never had a family. Maybe nostalgia isn't as good as it used to be. 
Maybe I grew up in a circus. Cool. No, maybe I grew up in a top secret installation. I'm the world's best operative. And, and I'm placed in this holding cell to test my reactions against enemy interrogation. No, that's, that's just ridiculous. If I were the world's best operative, I wouldn't have allowed myself to get stuck in this holding cell in the first place. So, so I could be in training to be the world's best operative? No. Who am I kidding? Now, that's a thought. I mean, does it really matter why I'm here? I'm here. Isn't that the point? If I believe that I was a farm boy from somewhere, oh, that would give me some kind of insight. But if I thought if I grew up in a circus, cool, wouldn't that give me belief that I had the skills of a circus performer? Especially since there's no one here to tell me differently. And if I, and if I thought I was a black op, ultra cool, uh, I could escape this. How, how much of what we are is what we make of ourselves? How much of it's predestined? I mean, isn't the definition of human spirit the ability to remake yourself in whatever way is needed at the time? Father... Son, brother, friend, professional, lover, husband, counselor. Why is it so different? Reality is shared, isn't it? And when you share it, you have to agree on how it's formed. But, but when you're alone, in the quietness of your own mind, why does it have to be limited to anything but what you want it to be? Why do I have to have only the memories of living in rural Canada? Accident. Accident. Fire. Fire. Bad choices. Bad choices. Shame. Shame. Games gone awry gone and a awry. long, tired, long walk home. tired walk home. We were playing. Three of us. I mean, I was at this friend's house. No, no. In his barn. And he was hiding, and another friend of mine and I were making a smoke bomb. You know how to do that. You just, you just need to have an empty plastic pen, a match, and a bobby pin. And you, you pull the pen apart, and you put the match in where the ink goes, and pull out the clicker on the end of the pen. And you spread the ends of the bobby pin like wings. And after you thread it through the small spring from the clicker, and then you put the match in where the ink was, and pull the bobby pin back... It slams hard into the head of the match. The match lights, burns through the plastic of the pen casing, and it makes a terrible stench. And I'd done it a dozen times in class when the teacher wasn't looking. And now we were in the top of his barn by the hay bales. But my other friend said it was wrong and matches, you know, dry hay. And I shrugged him off and we lit the bomb and we waited. But our prey was nowhere to be seen. Then almost disaster. The match had lit more than the plastic casing and I could see a curl of fire working up the bale. And if the barn wasn't an old structure with lots of holes to allow the blown snow in to settle in banks, we couldn't have rolled it over and put it out. It would have consumed the whole barn and everything in it. Oh, it was a terribly close call. But it was over. No. No, it wasn't. The half-burned bale ash was whipped up by the wind and it, it blew around the top of the barn like, like smoke from a signal fire. My friend's dad had seen it and we hadn't and he took us aside and he asked us if something happened in the barn. And we lied. We lied through our teeth because we were ashamed and should have known better. He sent us home. And my friend, whose barn we almost burned, looked at us with disgust. And we felt lower. And I made it worse. I told him that it was my other friend who did it. 
I compounded one lie with another. I might as well have set him on fire and stood with the others. I said he did it. And he tried to tell me not to. Even more, he didn't turn me in. And I treated his friendship with betrayal. Not that it mattered. We were both guilty and liars. They wouldn't believe me, even if it was the truth. I walked home that night, all of 11 or 12. I walked home a good three miles in the dark and knew that this was something that would stay with me forever. Stay with me right to my... Okay. So maybe it's not all good. Maybe there are skeletons in my closet. Who doesn't have them? You? 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 So maybe I'm not perfect. Maybe I have hurt someone. Maybe I've loved someone and left them. Maybe I've stepped on people to get where I am today. Maybe, maybe we all do that. Just a little bit. Maybe evil is just the inch-by-inch inch descent into the easiest thing. Maybe it's just not one choice. Maybe it's all those choices you put together. Don't be so smug. You're no different. Whoever you are. Do you hear me? You're no different than I am. Maybe you were a bully at a schoolyard. Maybe you just stole someone's term paper or you said something awful to someone at work to get that promotion. Did you kiss up to someone to get that extra perk when, when you really didn't like who they were and what they stood for? Did you not stand up? Did you not do anything when someone needed help? Help? Help! Please help me. You don't have to do what you did before. You can change. You can open this door. Let me out. And that will change you. Maybe not a lot. But it'll change something inside of you. Just one time. Do something you haven't done before. Take a chance. Take a chance. Please. 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 Oh, please. Prayers, 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 silent, 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 holding hands, holding hands, the smell of sterile smell blankets of sterile and the sound of careless sound machines careless beeping machines and machines whirring, 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 helplessness, 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 the very breath very of relief breath itself wrapped, itself wrapped, wrapped in a tiny bundle. Oh, please, I asked whatever was up there. I remember that. And as I held her hand, like so, I said, it's okay. It's all okay. But it wasn't. In my heart, I was so afraid. But you can't cry. You can't show you're scared. You have to be strong for her. She's doing all the work. She's the one in harm's way. But you can't help but feel helpless. Just a witness. <laughs> a witless witness to the events unfolding before you. You don't even really understand it until it's all over. And there, 
And there, there's the product of the months of waiting, of preparing. And she's got her smile. And she feels that way. You know, a first time feel. And when the blood is wiped away, she smells so fresh and new. And it's you. It's you in there, in her eyes. It's you. There, in those tiny, tiny fingers and that chin and her, and her ears. And she's something you've done. Something with no judgment. <laughs> A chance to start over. To begin again. Brand new first times. And she's so perfect in her frailty. So sculptured in her endless potential. And I look up at my wife. And she touches my face. And she's gone. I miss her so. No. Not. Not my wife. Not. Not her touch. My daughter. My daughter. My daughter touches my cheek. And her family is around me. And the sounds of the machines and the hospital. And everyone is there. And it's, it's so hard to breathe. Each breath is like a knife. It hurts so much, and I want to be brave. I want to tell the truth to them and not let them see me cry, but I just, I just want it to be over. They're all here, and I just want it to be over now. And she leans over, and she smiles. And I see the tears in her eyes, but they don't fall. They just twinkle like silent stars. She's being brave. She's the strong one. She gets that from me. She wants to take some of the pain away. I can see she feels helpless as I did, but it's not wrong. It's 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 life, and it's it's full of, of these pieces, like like fruit, like fruit from an orchard, like like apples. They're bitter, and they're sweet, and and sometimes they have worms, and and sometimes they're so delightfully sour that you remember them forever. Nothing can erase those memories. And if you're lucky, you'll have those memories to share with others. Because they'll be their memories too. And we've all just woven together where my life begins and, and where you enter and where I pass out of it. And, and you go on and enter his and hers and hers and his until... The whole quilt becomes a never-ending testament to the family of our existence. I will never forget her touch, my daughter's last touch. Because the last touch was the first of the last. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for my life. Thank you for this time here to remember it, to remember who I am, who I've become. There's more. There's, 
There's so much more I've, I've got to tell you, and now, now I can see it all. It's, it's not dark anymore. There's so much room, and the, and the light, the light's flowing like the brightest of mornings. Can you see it? I know. It's time to let go. Let it all go. It's like, for the first time, it makes sense. It's all just giving yourself enough room to see. Enough breathing space to grow. It's all breathing space within us. And everyone else. The light's getting brighter now. So bright. I can almost see everything. And there's just so much more. There's just so much more. I need to tell you. Like stars in the sky, another light twinkles out from our view. Or is it obscured by something just beyond what we can see? One man has found the exit from his prison, wandered off into the undiscovered country, leaving behind his darker musings. Breathing Space is from the Darker Musings Anthology series and was written and directed by Jack J. Ward with post-production by Umberto Lenzi, with Richard Summers as post-production advisor. Starring in this episode is Jack Ward, with Chris Jarvis, Mark Brzee, Pete Lutz, Sarah Golding, and introducing Wesley Clifford as both a narrator and a voice. All copyrights for the script in this production belongs to Jack Ward and is granted through Electric Vicuna Productions. And that's this week's show. Make sure you return next week for more great audio and the completion of Nat's Room. I've got to get out of the studio and meet up with Pete O'Malley and Richard Summers to talk about moving forward the rest of the year zero of Biff Straker to look at the remake of Faith and the excellent Most Dangerous Game. All of these will come out and more, but that's (laughs) another story. For now, I'm Jack Ward for David Alt. And all of us here at the Sonic Society, good night. The Sonic Society is written and produced weekly by Jack J. Ward and David Alt, with original music by Sharon B. at SharonB.com. All features, interviews, and audio drama shorts are owned completely by their originators and provided to the Sonic Society by Creative Commons Licensing. The Society itself originates from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. Thanks for listening. This has been an Electric Vicuna production.